Well, hadn't you predicted uh, at some point that uh, in the future six top officials of the Bush administration would be arrested on international charges of torture? I think it wasn't entirely coincidental. I'd been involved uh, a decade ago in a very famous case involving Senator Augusto Pinochet, uh, which had raised the issue of the crime of torture and question of exercise of jurisdiction by foreign courts. And I'd always been interested when the documents started coming out after the Abu Ghraib pictures were released. How could the lawyers have done it? That's really why I focused on the lawyers. You had been invited to represent Pinochet, and you declined? Uh, I, I had uh, been invited, and I did decline. We're not allowed Don't to... lawyers take any case? Well, we are. We're, we're, we, it's called the cab rank principle in England for, for barristers. We're supposed to take anyone that comes along. I had a rather powerful American wife, a New Yorker, I have to say, um, and she was less than thrilled because half her family lives in Spain and uh, is of a particular political persuasion. I managed to wiggle out of it. We have a thing called professional embarrassment exception. Uh, I'd given a radio interview saying he shouldn't have immunity, and on that basis, I wiggled out of it. And you then worked for the other side. I then was approached by uh, a body based in New York, actually. Again, there's a lot of New York-related stuff here, Human Rights Watch, and they retained me. Uh, They intervened, and we ended up winning the case. The case against the American officials, to some degree, uh, depend on uh, arguments made at Nuremberg, that there's no immunity for the highest-ranking former government officials when they're accused of committing crimes like torture? It it doesn't depend on uh, the Nuremberg precedent, but it's closely related to it. Uh, There are now, since Nuremberg, a raft of international conventions, which actually the U.S. has done more than any other country to put in place, famously the Geneva Conventions, the Convention Against Torture, and they create an obligation to investigate, and there's no entitlement to immunity. Is Spain the only country (laughs) where this sort of thing is happening? Well, Spain, is still, Spain is still pursuing this case, and this case will, will go forward, and this case is bringing particular pressure on the Obama administration uh, to do something. There are criminal investigations uh, in Britain, in my country, and I suspect that there will be criminal investigations in other parts of the world because the detainees come from so many different countries. And this is different than the sort of thing that we saw after the Vietnam War where American officials were tried in absentia in different parts of the no, world? No, it's very different. The, the, the law has moved on. You've got international conventions. You've got precedents. You've got international courts and tribunals. We're in a very different situation. And I think the advice that the Bush Six, as they've come to be known, uh, as uh, is, I suspect, don't set foot outside this country. The Bush Six, amongst others, I think the list is, uh, is about to be extended. Your question was, do you go up the chain of command? I think that's a tactical issue. I mean, you have to ask yourself the question, if you were a prosecuting judge, would you go against the main men and women today? There are political issues raised with, with doing that. That would be President Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld? Uh, well, amongst others, but of course there's new material that's come out very recently, which tends to show that other high-ranking officials, uh, CIA Director George Tenet, uh, former Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice, were involved in the decision directly to authorize waterboarding.